99.9%. That's a recent statistic that's been found of the attacks on user credentials that would have been defeated had MFA been enabled, multi-factor authentication. So in this video, I want to quickly walk through the ability to enable MFA for users for Azure Active Directory. Now, before I do that, I just want to touch on one thing. The utopian vision, our ideal is passwordless. So with passwordless with Azure AD, there's really three methods for this today. I can think about hello for business. That's where my machine is known to Azure Active Directory. I can have a hybrid scenario where I have AD and Azure AD, and it uses public private keys and hardware on a machine to actually perform my authentication. So it's a strong authentication. It's the machine I have, and then that key. Now I can also use the Azure Authenticator app. So this is where when I register this, I can actually go and connect to some site. It will prompt up on the app and I maybe do some biometric or a pin and I'm authenticated. I'm not using a password. And then one of the newest options is kind of when I think about these FIDO2, these hardware tokens. These are all methods that I can get to passwordless um, for my Azure Active Directory environment. So that's kind of the utopia. But many companies are a ways away from that. So let's think about multi-factor authentication. Um, with multi-factor authentication, I want to think about, well, at least two factors. Um, something I know, something I have, something I am. So this could be, hey, my phone with my authenticator app. It could be a biometric. It could be a pin that I type in and a device. And when I think about this registration process for Azure Active Directory, in the past, we actually had two separate registrations for our users. There was absolutely one for MFA. Then there was a separate one for if I wanted to do the self-service password reset. That's where a user forgets their password. Uh, they can go to a site. And based on the methods I've enabled, they can reset their password. Now, what happened is these have kind of converged to this new kind of security registration. And now I go through this very seamless experience because there were a lot of the same questions, a lot of the same pieces of information. And when I've done that security registration, I'm now ready for MFA and self-service password reset. Now, as the administrator, I specify which methods I want to enable. For example, I can have security questions. Now, some of those pieces of information won't work for MFA and self-service password reset. For example, security questions. They don't work for MFA, but I can use them for self-service password reset. There's always been a historical challenge with this security registration. Now, I can drive that registration in a number of different ways. I could use conditional access to require MFA for something. So the first time it would make them register for MFA. I could use the password reset registration. I could use the identity protection feature for MFA sign up. And I only want to use one of these things. So those are the methods to drive this security registration. However, how do I know it's really the person performing that registration? What if the bad guy got in there really early and the bad guy drives the security registration? They set up the methods for MFA. They set up the self-service password reset. So one of the common challenges organizations have had is, well, how do I make sure this initial security registration is done in a secure manner, that it can't be intercepted by the bad actors? And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk through firstly kind of getting to this converge, this combined security registration. I'm going to walk through the methods to drive users to this registration through the password reset sign up, through the identity protection MFA sign up. And then a core new feature in conditional access that I can specify conditions, for example, I must be within a corporate location 
to actually perform the security registration on that first time. Let's start out with just making sure we have that converged security registration experience for our users. So the way we're going to do that is we're in our Azure AD tenant. And then in the manage section, if I scroll down to my user settings, at the bottom of this screen, I'll see user feature previews. Now that's at time of recording. If I select that, I have this option for users can use preview features for registering and managing security info enhanced. That is the combined self-service password reset and the MFA joint experience. Now for those two features, for password reset in that same manage area, I can see users I've enabled for self-service password reset. I've set it for everyone. I could limit that to groups, but also you'll see the methods I can use. So how many of these do I require to actually perform a reset? In this case, it's just one. A lot of companies will use two. And what are those methods I'm going to allow? Here I've got security questions enabled. Remember, there were still separate policies for MFA and the self-service password reset. Security questions I can't actually use as part of MFA. So you're gonna configure that. And here in the password reset, I can configure registration. This is where I can drive that registration experience that because I've now done that combined, this will also work for the MFA. So I've said yes, they need to register when signing in, and how often they're gonna be asked to reconfirm their authentication information. For the MFA configuration, I'm gonna go back up a level, go down to my security, go to MFA. Now for the actual service settings, I'm gonna to need to go into additional cloud-based MFA settings link. And here I can actually configure what are my options for MFA. So if you look at the bottom, I can use call to phone, text message, notification through the mobile app, verification code from mobile app or hardware token, and how long MFA can be remembered for. So that's the policy I'm configuring for the MFA service. Now, what about the registration? If I go back over for the MFA registration is actually a feature of Azure AD identity protection. Now that is an Azure AD premium P2 feature. So if I look for identity protection, what we'll actually see is MFA registration policy. So here I can actually go ahead and drive the registration of MFA for users. And because again, it's combined, this would also meet the requirements of self-service password reset. And the users would be driven through this nice little wizard. It's gonna be an interruption to their logon and it will step them through making sure they register all the methods you require. Now, additionally, users could access that same security information via their profile, the My Apps page, or they can jump over to aka.ms slash mysecurityinfo. And from here, I could go through and see my current configuration. I could modify things as required. And again, because I'm accessing this, it's making me perform an MFA. So I'm gonna just accept that on my watch. And then it will go through to the actual page. And here you can see all the different security methods that I have registered my phone. So I can get text messages, uh, maybe a phone call depending on my policy. I've got the authenticator app registered on my phone and I've got email. And again, you could get to this from my profile. If I go to view my account with my regular profile and here I could say edit security info 
and I'm back at this page. So this is great, but it leads back to the initial problem and the point of this video. That registration initially, how do I know some bad actor, some malicious person hasn't got the user's initial password and they're the one logging on for the first time and they are the ones entering the security information. And this is where this nice new capability of conditional access comes into play. So if I scroll down to my security, I have conditional access. And conditional access is phenomenal. When we think about multi-factor authentication, it's kind of outside the scope of this video, but I don't want to just turn on MFA for every logon. Users will get used to just clicking yes, 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 and they'll always click yes, even if they didn't do something to prompt MFA and it was that bad person. We want MFA to be based on, hey, I'm elevating my privilege through something like Privileged Identity Manager. It's based on risk detection through things like identity protection. Hey, I'm logging on from an unknown location. Hey, I've got impossible travel. Um, there's some anomalous behavior. Hey, my credential has been leaked. Identity protection can integrate with conditional access to add that risk element, and that should drive my MFA. But when I think about that initial registration, I want to drive that from maybe an on-premises location. So the thing I'm going to care about here is I could target my users and groups as usual, but I'm going to target my cloud apps and actions. I'm going to change it to user actions. And here we can see this policy will apply to register security information. So now I have a policy that's going to be aimed just at that security information registration experience. And now I could add conditions and those conditions could be things like, well, my location is going to include only selected locations and it's my office location. And remember my office location, I would define as part of my conditional access based on the external IP that is visible. So the IP addresses you have at your network edge that NAT your traffic to the internet, that's what Azure AD will see. That's how you would define your corporate location. So in that conditional access policy, you're gonna say, hey, yeah, I'm gonna allow that security registration only from my office location. So now I'm less concerned about some bad actor doing that initial registration because I'm only gonna allow it from my on-premises location. I could do other controls. Maybe it has to be hybrid joined from the device perspective. There are other things I can do, but that location is a big one. And yes, yes, I know um, trusting the network is really something we're trying to move away from. We think zero trust network, we wanna focus instead on that identity. But in this case, this can be a pretty powerful feature. So I wanted to just make sure people were aware of this. MFA is phenomenal. As I mentioned at the start, 99.9% .9 I think of attacks I read that are very common could be stopped if MFA was enabled for the users and we're using those detections of elevation of risk. So we wanna drive that MFA registration. We wanna get it deployed in our organizations and that initial first hurdle of, well, how do I enable that secure registration Conditional access is going to help me do that through this new user actions and register security information. Hope this helped. Good luck.